Good morning, everyone. So, uh, I'm going to talk today about uh, Zephyrin products, and then Anuj uh, is going to take us deeper into the structure of uh, Zephyr. I've been using Zephyr uh, for a while. The subtitle is my uh, my attempt at uh, cheesy journalism, clickbait journalism, to see how that top works. five things to use. Uh, top yes. five reasons to use Zephyr. Yes. So, a little bit about me before I get started. Uh, all this slide tells you is that I'm old. Maybe I'm wise, I don't know, that's up for you to decide. So, take everything I say with a pinch of salt. So, but primarily I've been a kernel uh, developer, so low level uh, uh, on Zephyr Atos, on Linux, and also maintainer, I work upstream uh, on the projects. Uh, if you go once in a while, less detail. Try to as much as possible. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, a little bit about the company that I'm currently running. So, Embed Rock, uh, I'm a co founder of Embed Rock along with my partner, Akshay Sharma, there. Uh, the other guy. Um, and we are basically a, a ODM and a turnkey OEM. So, we are, we are doing a lot of electronic devices. Design a lot of uh, hardware. Uh, we write a lot of firmware for those devices. And uh, along the way, um, because we had to manufacture our own devices, uh, we created a, a EMS system, uh, a Dunky EMS system, uh, which we opened to everybody else as well. Uh, we call it PCB Kingdom. That's that. So effectively, our business is three things: it's uh, ODM devices, so devices that we own and we white label and sell it to others. Uh, uh, OEM devices, so somebody comes to us with a concept and say that we need help uh, doing hardware, firmware and then manufacturing, but it is all the customer's branding. So the, that is the third and the uh, final piece of the puzzle is the PCB Kingdom. So we offer turnkey EMS services. So that's what we are doing as a business. Uh, some of the products uh, we've we built over the years, uh, over the last uh, three or four years, um, that runs Zephyr in, in some form or the other. So, four major categories um, medical technology, automotive, uh, some modules, and, and industry. So, we have products uh, for air monitoring, transformer monitoring, air controllers, and Zephyr. Uh, we have some modules. Uh, most of the stuff we've, we've put that in the table there. So, if there is interest, uh, we can spend five, ten minutes after we are done with the discussions uh, uh, to sh talk about it if, if anybody is interested. Um, some, some automotive stuff as well, and then health and med tech. So, this is the land that I'm working with. So, working with a customer on, on, on this stuff. So, the idea being that. Uh, I wanted to give a quick, uh, a broad overview of all the kinds of things we are using Zephyr in. It's not restricted to a specific thing. Uh, yeah, this is some pictures of uh, things in deployment. So the one on the left is uh, AirMondi, so it's air monitoring uh, devices. Uh, the one on the right, uh, this box here, is connected to a transformer. So we call it TMondi. Video suddenly showed up, so that's this time uh, we were just doing some assemblies, uh, final assemblies before shipping out the orders. Uh, so that, uh, that is that. Uh, let's come back to this talk. So this talk is about microcontrollers mostly. I, I put that in there usually because I also work on Linux and CPUs and whatnot, so I'm not going to focus on that aspect. This is purely we are talking about Zephyr, microcontrollers. We are talking kilobytes, no megabytes here, everything is in kilobytes. We are talking about workflows, workflows. So that's that's what uh, that's the message I'm trying to convey why I'm using workflows. And absolutely interrupt me and ask questions. Don't wait until the end. Because uh, otherwise this talk is not very long. It's a very simple talk. So why Zephyr? So Zephyr is a task. Hopefully everybody here knows that. Uh, is there anybody who doesn't know what Zephyr is? Uh, 
So Zephyr is a real-time operating system. Uh, it is uh, uh, currently uh, being uh, funded by Linux Foundation. Uh, it is a consortium of companies that have uh, invested and uh, are helping develop this thing, but it's a completely open source community uh, to build a real-time operating system. There are a lot of real-time operating systems for microcontrollers out there. Especially has its own thing. Every, almost every vendor has its own thing. But then there are generic ones like iOS, Apache has a mining project. Uh, there is uh, FreeRTOS, which Amazon acquired a few years ago. So I, as far as I'm concerned, it's a dead project to me now. Um, then there is um, any other RT thread, uh, mostly used in China and Asia. Embed. Embed ARM. Um, Crappy operating system, uh, and they want to nickel and dime you for every small feature. So um, that's the politics of it. Because I was actually involved in rejecting Embed uh, in, uh, in my role at Linaro. Uh, although ARM was our biggest sponsor, and we were like, Embed is not what we want to uh, push for uh, getting the ecosystem onto a common purpose. So. Why is FR? So basically, um, it is the Linux of MCUs. So when I make this statement, what I'm trying to say is, I, I don't, uh, it's not the politics of it, it's more of the meritocracy. So there is an open source community, there are a lot of hobbies who are playing with it, they're, they're contributing code, they're uh, building tablets with it. And it's completely open source, everything from the SDK all the way to every single feature. Uh, security features and this and that. Embed, if you started using security features, you had to start paying. Um, so this is a completely open source stack, uh, which is the way I like it. I worked on Linux before, this is the way I want my entire stack from my tool chain all the way up uh, to the application framework, everything to be available to have. So that is why I call it the Linux of MCUs. Um, the current uh, I mean, currently, when we when we when I got involved in Zephyr, this was in 2016, and they just they had just uh, I don't want to encroach on your uh, talk because no, no. he's going to cover a lot of that. But basically, when they had thrown it over the wall, you see, Intel uh, took this hard house inside Wind River, and then they basically threw it over the wall, calling it a open source project, put it under the Linux Foundation umbrella. But there were like three members: it was like NXP, uh, Intel, and one other that I forget. And then Lenaro was pretty much the fourth one, and I was working at Lenaro at that point, uh, trying to convince our membership, so SD Micro and uh, others, that this is the operating system to put our weight behind. I, I don't want to get into the details of that. I can talk about it privately. Why? The point being, it is what I consider to be the Linux of our microcomputers. Every other project. Property are tasks. It's been acquired by somebody or it's controlled by somebody. The RT is a very Chinese specific thing. Uh, although it has broad support, but there is some level of control by certain entities. Free art is pretty much Amazon and it's uh, Azure, Microsoft. Uh, so it doesn't fit my needs of being a completely open source uh, ecosystem. Developer work. I'm old, I have set ways of doing things. I like my Emacs editor, I like my net files, I like whatever. I don't really care about new family IDs and this and that that come into uh, which every uh, vendor tries to build their ecosystem around. The other reason is I am interested in building products. I don't want to spend a lot of time Understanding every single SOC vendors, SDK, their tools, their workflows. I want to figure it out once and it should work across, again, okay, like Linux. Uh, I could work across multiple architectures, multiple this thing, and just everything will look similar. And there was one way to flash the problem, there was one way to, everything else, the like, details are hidden from the developer. So that is what I, I stress on. So if there's one thing uh, you want to take away from the uh, stock today, it is that developer workflows is the reason Zephyr, in my opinion, will succeed. 
because there is one single way to do to build applications in Wakan, and they will run across our IDR systems. Sure, there are some different details. Everything doesn't work in pretty much everything because you don't have certain features. Um, your Mac area might be slightly different for your Wi-Fi chip and expressive. Uh, so it has to fit into the Wi-Fi driver for Zephyr. There's very preferred driver for Zephyr and whatnot. Those are details that can be ironed out. They have been ironed out uh, in uh, Linux, for example. They will be ironed out eventually. Because the amount of companies, so Google, Facebook joined last year as Zephyr uh, members. So basically what they've said is we are stopping all development of our own internal RTOSs that we use for embedded controllers for our servers and this and that. We are going to start using Zephyr for that. So there's a lot of weight behind thrown be thrown behind the Zephyr now. So uh, interesting anecdote that I want to throw out. So during the last four years of COVID, when there was a massive chip shortage in pretty much any sector, Tesla had an issue with one of their chips. And instead of trying to keep sourcing it, they decided to move to a different chip. And then rewrote that firmware and started doing it. Right? I'm not sure if they use Zephyr or not, but that's the kind of attitude that you can have if you're using Zephyr. Uh, in contrast, GM, I think, uh, was it Chrysler, uh, one of those actually stopped making cars with push buttons because they could not get that chip. Right? They went back to key entry. Right? So that's the different attitude that you can have. Right? Like one guy like, we can't get chips, we're going back to the old mechanical style of doing things. And then Tesla is like, fuck it, we, we don't get this chip, we are going to get a different chip in G Street and that. Right? So that's the kind of attitude that uh, Amit is talking about. That is, that is a fantastic point. And so pretty much everything that we have there, I can change my microcontroller over, overnight. I would not, it would take me a few hours for my application to be readjusted to the new microcontroller because I abstracted away all of that itself. And there are, this, there are good practices on how to do that. And that to me as a product builder is more important than one uh, cool feature in some practice. The point being that there is a reason why we are, we are trying to do this. So, architecture is MCU's board. So, Zephyr has support for pretty much every architecture that matters, hardware architecture. Uh, we were just talking about the density column for the older ESP generation that was also started uh, uh, entering Zephyr uh, from your teams. Uh, that was the only thing left, I think, until last year, that was pretty much the only major MCU that was not supported. But especially the also jumped onto that, so that was fantastic. Uh, everything else, SD Micro, Nordic. SD Micro and Nordic, I was personally involved in getting them over. Uh, as of sometime last year, Nordic basically abandoned their internal SDK completely and they have moved to Zephyr. So, 2016, we were involved in getting them interested. We created boards using the NRF52, NRF51. We ported Zephyr to it. So, if you go look for my name, uh, my name is uh, among the commits to port NRF51. Them. Same thing for STM. Uh, I, I did some ports for STM uh, 32F4 series to get them convinced. Now they are appalling. So they, the STM 32Q just drops as a higher layer and then everything else is set up. So, so the, just the sheer number of architectures there's x86, Extensa, ARM, West 5, everything. It's all supported. DSP, uh, microcontrollers, every major series that I about is being supported and people are starting some some uh, some people who are lacking like safety maps and dialogue I think they are getting around and then ports and it's like out of the box I think there's like two to three hundred developer ports supported in Zephyr so it will just work out of the box so that is very important from, again from a developer of your next reason because I so a lot of people come and say, why should I use Zephyr? All I need is toggle a few GPIOs, blink an LED, and I'm done. I could do it bare metal or I could use the like SDK. Unfortunately, IoT. Everybody wants, oh, and can you do all the air updates? Can I, there's a Bluetooth chip in there, can I 
and somehow use that for debugging or something. So it never ends at just stopping GPIOs and uh, uh, just that one tiny feature. Yes, if that is the only use case you have, then maybe Zephyr is okay. I will give you that. But because everybody wants to make it IoT, uh, it never ends there. And as soon as you talk about an IoT product, there are a lot of other things that happen. A lot of other things you have to worry about security, you have to worry about network protocol stacks, you have to worry about. And so that then becomes a painful point if, uh, if you don't have it all well integrated. So, battery is included. So effectively, Zephyr is not just an RTOS. So, the RTOS is literally just an RTOS. Few lines, few platform ports, and done. You don't get a TCP IP stack, you don't get a PD stack, you don't get pretty much nothing. You can blink LEDs and this and that, but that's it. Then you have to figure out what else to integrate in there, how to write, maybe write it on your own. With Zephyr, all of this is part of Zephyr and it's very test. So on networking side, you see all these protocols, you see hardware level support as well as uh, protocol level support for all a bunch of protocols. I think you're working with Matter over here, Open Thread Matter, it's all support. So they basically, the Open Thread group uh, output is basically put into Zephyr as a sub module, it's a module and it's, it's, uh, it has a Zephyr shield layer to make it uh, talk to the Zephyr IP stack uh, properly. And also as a separate have. Yes, so exactly. So that question. Uh, same thing around security. So support for OTA, support for crypto, TLS, trusted firmware. And this is all built in. So trusted firmware uh, from ARM, uh, TFM, DFA, it's all integrated. Uh, TLS support, embedded TLS, I know half. Uh, crypto accelerator, time encrypt, and other things. OTA, so that's MCU. So you have the bootloader and the manager. So you can have a bootloader and do uh, if you upgrade something. So all of this, when I say batteries included, is that you can build all of this into an integrated product. Which is why I said because IoT, and previous slide was because IoT, eventually your product will go beyond blinking and LED or talking to GPIs. And that's when you start needing all this. So that's again, that's why I'm pitching them. Uh, LTS releases, so Zephyr has, uh, I think as of two years ago, they started doing proper LTS releases with security overviews and whatnot. So there's proper security team that's actually looking for vulnerability and whatnot. And they are standing behind, meaning that they will support this for two years until the next LTS release and whatnot. And I believe that effort is going to grow. So right now they want to only support it for two years, the first ten years that they did. But eventually that will grow like Linux to like five years and six years of support depending on uh, customer needs. So automotive manufacturing, if you start getting into automotive, the lifetime of that is 10 to 15 years. So that is where somebody like a Red Hat, which Red Hat, why did it grow this big? Because it could actually support this whole Kernel for like 10 to 15 years. So you do not have to change your applications to so keep doing security fixes, over security fixes on top of it. Somebody like that will come around for the first time, for example. It's already started, so the Linux Foundation is already doing it, but I'm sure there's other companies that will also start doing it for longer term for specific areas and whatnot. So, this for products, this is great because. I can just follow their LTS releases. I don't need to go to their latest version to get a feature back or a bug fix back. So somebody is doing that work. They're testing it in their CI loops. They have labs. They have various labs. So they're testing all of that. I can start from that point of view rather than starting. So very few vendors will actually support that. Okay, my this version of my SDK is going to be supported for the next six years if you ship it in the product because there's liability issues. So this LTS release security also plays a role into, into uh, picking what I want to do uh, when I'm doing product support. Because I have warranty claims, I have, if, I, if there's a bug fake security, I need to be able to 
uh, fix this without having my own huge engineering uh, team. So this is basically shared engineering. So if the community uh, and the companies behind the so are investing effort into doing all these maintenance, which reduces burden. Obviously, as a way of giving back, hopefully someday I will be able to say, okay, I'm going to pay the next foundation because I like this one. That's the end. And this is what Amit brought up earlier, supply chain free. So this is one of the biggest things that has allowed us uh, as a uh, the freedom. I, I know this is not something in this room that you want to hear. People being able to migrate very easily away from your microcontroller. Know, but for a product picker, it is very important. Uh, we've migrated ST to Nordic to others. Anything, as long as they're first. NRF 832, the 52.832, not available, okay, 833, fine. It's been compatible with that. Everything is hidden away by uh, how we use device tree and how we use the uh, application. So, our application didn't even have to be changed for all of those. So, we've done a bunch of that. Uh, and that basically freed us up from uh, worrying about. Is this microcontroller going to be available for the next 10 years? I don't care. Honestly. I will choose whatever is available for the right price point and the right features. Actually, I think it might be even applicable for folks like Espressive because they can end their product lines faster. Right? If let's say we have C3 and then C4 and C6 and C7 and whatever, they don't have to promise that C3 is going to be around for 10 years. Because they can say that C5 also supports Zephyr and it's a drop and replacement, same price, whatever. It's a great point. And the specific can kind of bank on that as well. So, any questions uh, so far? Yes, so I have uh, two questions. So, first is uh, Does Zephyr have something for low power? Yes, it has a complete power maintenance uh, yeah. remote. Uh, it is being used by most of the controllers. So NRF, NRF, yes, sir. I know. Yeah, but others are also supported. So SEM uh, low power is supported. Yeah. Same so all, all exists. You have to now just plug in your hooks to, for your microcontroller. So uh, for the WFI state or whatever. Yeah. I'm in the process of it. Yeah, so that uh, framework already yeah. exists. Uh, it's not just system power management, it can also do device uh, driver level, driver level power. So it has runtime time PM. Okay. So you can basically. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Linux clock frameworks and uh, regular frameworks and other things. But basically, there is a reference counting mechanism. So you get and put clocks as you want to mm -hmm. use. Uh, clock eighteen, you need to say. Yeah, exactly. So you, you when you you get a clock, yeah. meaning you have increased the reference count, meaning that clock should not be shut down. Mm -hmm. right? As soon as you release the clock, the clock can be automated. And so Zephyr already has uh, support for that. Uh, Runtime uh, power maintenance. So if you look for runtime PM in Zephyr, okay. I'm in the that process. Yeah. So I, I used to get up uh, for almost a decade. I headed up uh, power management efforts uh, across uh, the ARM ecosystem in Aro. And uh, so yeah, this is this is very dear to my heart. Yeah. So okay. uh, let's talk later. Yeah. And one more question, like uh, from when we use normal Linux to make it runtime had that R type patch or something, we patched it so that to make it real time. So what is the story here of making Linux into RTOS? So what is what is the uh, recipe here? Huh? It's not Linux into RTOS. This is an RTOS. Yeah, this is an RTOS, but it's finally Linux, right? No. Oh. <coughs> it's a completely brand new car. Yeah, but it's based on Linux. No. Not it's even just the Linux foundation that is the course. Yes. But we are bringing in ideas from Linux. So Linux okay. Foundation, yeah, that's a confusing bit because it is Linux Foundation funding it. Okay. So but it's like Apache will also support some QTT, but then there's Apache Nginx server and Apache uh, RTOS or whatever. So like the Apache is the foundation, which is just making sure that these different projects have the same uh, structure for management behind them. But other than that, there's not much. Yeah, there the structure some... is very similar to Linux. Yeah, like yes. Like the the like a lot of the code, that, a lot of the core developers uh, are all X. Uh, yeah. yeah. There are some parts. I'm going to talk about that later. Like yeah. for example, the device. Yeah. 
right? Yeah, exactly. So that's but right. the core of the kernel is not the same. Okay. It's completely written from scratch. Okay. And it is uh, written for a simpler world compared to Linux. It yeah, is still yeah, become obviously. very complex compared yeah. for compared to other art houses, it's still become quite complex. But it is much simpler than Linux. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much, uh, I have nothing else. Uh, if you have any questions. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I saw somewhere in the AGI project, Lenara was talking, but I never saw Zephyr into that. So how different is that? AGL is automotive grade Linux. Yeah. So it is only Linux. It's focused on Linux. Not so embedded. It was, it was embedded Linux and many companies. It's embedded to Linux. Yeah. It's, it's, it's running on CPUs. Zephyr is about microcontrollers. So, automotive obviously has microcontrollers, but AGL is probably not the umbrella uh, under which that work is happening. There are other projects, uh, so uh, most of the automotive companies are also starting to use Zephyr internally uh, because it, Zephyr has support for Canvas, for example. So, they are starting to do that, but uh, it's probably happening under a different Uh, if there is any other questions, otherwise I'm going to hand over to Anuj, who's actually going to take us into the details of. Uh... All right, thank you. No, I mean it, it, this will kind of be like a continuation, so uh, feel free to keep asking questions. And just stop the recording and start. A new